Well, John and I just got back from the first day of the Westminster Conference on Science and Faith, and we're looking forward to tomorrow. And what's tomorrow, David? It sure sounds like a special day. Well, it is. It's my birthday. It's your birthday? Uh-huh. If you could have anything in the whole world for your birthday, what would it be? Hmm, let me think. I think I'd like something that saves lives and blows minds. Saves lives and blows minds? That sounds like our Islamicize Me project. It sure does. Should we tell them what it's about? Well, we could. Um, many of you who've followed the news over the years, you may have witnessed a recurring problem, namely, um, young people convert to a new ideology and then decide to go wage jihad and end up dying while blowing someone up or killing someone. And uh, our friend Vocab actually knew someone who did that. He was friends with a Muslim, a convert to Islam, who went out and died while trying to kill Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller. An evangelical pastor close to Simpson says he was not surprised to hear Simpson's name connected with the Texas terror attack. He ex had expressed to me admiration, specifically for Osama bin Laden. He used the word hero. Gee, how's our project going to deal with that? Well, it, it, it's pretty simple. Um, when these young guys convert, it's usually for very silly reasons. And then they base their confidence and their, they, they have this willingness to go out and sacrifice themselves. And it's all based upon nonsense. So my theory is if we just show them that it's nonsense, well, maybe they won't go out and die for it. And then we'll be saving lives, not just the lives of the people they would be trying to kill, but their own lives. And uh, the idea behind this was, was based on Morgan Spurlock's documentary, Super Size Me, where he spent 30 days eating nothing but McDonald's food and had doctors monitor the impact it had on his body. It took him, I think, a year and a half to recover from the damage it did to his body. Well, we're looking at things in a slightly different way. We're going to look at the impact following the commands of Muhammad would actually have on a person. And we're going to monitor the results and the impact it has. And so basically it's going to be a similar situation, but we're going to have three guys who are challenged to live according to the teachings of Muhammad for 30 days. But it's not just going to be what uh, many people think of as Islam. Oh, they're going to be praying and so on. Uh, no, they're going to be uh, drinking water with dead animals floating in it because Muhammad said water is not made impure by anything. Uh, if they get a stomach ache because of that, the solution will be to drink camel urine because that's what Muhammad said was the solution to stomach ills. They'll be hiring prostitutes and not using protection because Muhammad frowned upon that. And so what's going to happen to these guys over and over again is they're going to catch disease after disease from, you know, dunking flies in their foods and so on, catching diseases from prostitutes, but also the physical toll of if you have your, your mutza wife, you've hired a prostitute, and then you beat her because she's your wife and you're allowed to beat her and her pimp shows up to do something about that, well, these guys are going to run into a lot of problems over these 30 days. And uh, in this particular series, the culminating jihad attack will be an attempt to kill Robert Spencer. We'll see how that ends up going for them. Anyway, we're going to put all of this together in a massive series. Certainly the, the biggest thing by far that I've ever that I've ever worked on. This is huge. So we're talking about um, 30 days worth of, uh, worth of projects. We're flying in uh, three cameramen. We're, um, we, we've, we've got a huge cast to, to uh, fill out all the roles that, we're, um, that we've got for this. And so this is gonna be huge. Well, with a project this big, how are you possibly gonna be able to afford in the film crew, a whole bunch of people's plane tickets, a hotel, ETC? Well, that, uh, that's where they come in. <laughs> we, we, do, we do have some, uh, some last minute uh, needs and costs that people can help out with. And uh, there are some other things as well. So for instance, if you live in the Phoenix area where we're recording, 
Um, there are a couple like scenes that we need to, to, to film that require kind of a special location. So for instance, um, Muhammad said that you could uh, drink water um, even if a dead animal is floating in the water. Well, I have purchased some dead animal carcasses that we're going to put in some water and then drink the water. Now, keep it before everyone sends me messages saying, no, don't really drink the water. No, I'm, we're not. This is, a, this is a mockumentary, not a documentary. So we're not actually going to do these things, but they are going to be uh, represented on film. So um, anyway, after uh, uh, drinking this and so we, we need a place where we have like a little pool of water there or a stream or something where we can have the dead animals to drink the dead animal carcass water and then probably blame the Jews when it doesn't work. But uh, we're going to need places like that. And I'm not from there, so I don't know the area very well. We will find one. But if you're from the area and you happen to know, oh, I got a stream in my backyard or, you know, hey, I can, I've got a ditch that I can fill up with a hose and, and that sort of thing can help. Um, some other things we, we still have, we, all of the main roles are filled, but if you want to be um, an extra for, for certain scenes, like someone in the background when we're in the mosque and uh, making some points about uh, some of Muhammad's teachings in the mosque, if you want to be someone in the, the mosque, uh, you can do that. We, we can always use more prostitutes for our mutta wives. Now, I'll, you, you, you Christian girls out there, you're thinking, I don't want to be a prostitute. Guess what? We are going to put you in a burqa. We only want modest attire for our prostitute mutta wives. So we, we only want appropriate garb in those situations. So you don't have to actually show your face, but uh, we, we, have, we, have a couple, uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, mutta wives already, but since we're allowed many more mutta wives, we can always put more into the scene. So if you want to be in here, just keep in mind what you're getting into. This is not the safest production to be, uh, uh, to appear in. Um, but uh, if you want to be in there, that's fine. Now, here's the thing. Don't be like, like, uh, uh, like you're going to be a serial killer or something in the future and you appear in our show and then you go like murder a bunch of school kids later in your life. And then everyone's like, oh, look at the, look at the guy they got for their video. No, no, no. Just be a, you know, basically level-headed person uh, to, to play these roles. Anyway, there's stuff like that that uh, people in that area can help out with. There's also some equipment problems. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been upgrading uh, our equipment over the years. So it started off, Nabil and I just started with a little camcorder and then we upgraded to a better one and then to a better one and then to a better one. And then eventually, this was last year, I talked to an, an actual cameraman and I said, if I didn't want to upgrade my, my YouTube videos anymore as far as equipment, if I just wanted a, a camera that I'm never going to have to upgrade again, uh, what would it be? And uh, well, that was, that was this one. So we went to uh, DSLR, we've got two of these. But um, that, was, that was in terms of like filming me in front of my bookcase. We found out from experience these do not work well if you're actually running around filming stuff. They don't, uh, the autofocus doesn't work well enough. Uh, you can't zoom quickly enough with these. So uh, I've been told that we need a camcorder, professional camcorder that matches the resolution of one of these. So we need, uh, a, so again, this is fine for what I normally do, like in front of my bookshelf. But uh, for the things that we're doing in uh, this video series, we need a bigger one, which is good because when we do things like this in the future, we also have it uh, for those situations. But that's the main cost because they run generally uh, about three to $6,000, but you can obviously get much more expensive ones, but for something that would, that would work for us. Um, so there's things like that. There's certain lights that we need, a pole for the boom mic, um, so, uh, uh, this sort of um, scaffolding situation for lights and a couple more mics, a little portable soundboard, a bunch of stuff that we need because we're doing a different kind of thing right now um, than we've done before. So anyway, there are a bunch of last minute needs that I told will make this much better. We can do it. We'll get by if we have to with these, but uh, we can make it a lot uh, a lot better if we have uh, some some additional equipment. And also there are all kinds of uh, other costs, the hotel rooms, uh, the plane tickets for everyone we're, we're flying in. And so basically that ate up all the um, uh, the money we had stored for, for projects. And so uh, if you'd like to chip in for this, keep in mind, I believe this is going to be the most epic resource in history dealing with these kinds of issues and feel feel free once we start posting this to tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong. In fact, I'm so confident if you think of anything that deals with the kind of issues we're dealing with, um, 
if this is going to be a 10, assuming I can make it like it is in my mind on the screen, if I can get it on the screen like it is in my mind, if this is going to be a 10, like the next best thing ever would be like a five. That's how awesome this is. So you can actually be telling future generations, your children, your grandchildren, hey, I helped produce that. I helped fund that project. You want to be in that camp. So uh, anyway, we've got uh, we've got a GoFundMe set up to basically cover all the, the, the associated costs and so on. And again, this does help for the future because, you know, I don't have to upgrade this anymore. And once we have the camcorder that, that matches it, we don't have to upgrade that anymore. So uh, this is sort of uh, working on uh, for all future projects. Uh, but we have a, a GoFundMe set up. That's not connected to a 501c3. That's just what we're going to use to get this. But if you do want it connected to a 501c3, in other words, if you want to make a charitable donation towards a project, and you want it for your taxes, um, you can do that by, you can do that through PayPal by going to the link on my website and doing a donation through PayPal. And that will be, that, that's, that's tax deductible. So two ways to uh, contribute. Uh, hope everyone, uh, I just wanna say, everything I've ever asked for in the past, starting with like, I don't know, 2008, 2009, when it was, when it was me and Nabil, Everything we've always needed, every trip we've ever needed to take, every piece of equipment we've ever needed, every microphone we've ever needed, uh, people have always, always covered it in the past. So I want to thank everyone for, uh, for being so generous. And uh, uh, that's why I expect good things from, uh, from uh, this video. And uh, I look forward to you seeing what we're cooking up.